okay, the reason why I'm here is obviously because I came this close to being a priest. Uh, yeah, uh, I was not going to be a Catholic priest though. I was going to be Eastern Orthodox, which is the religion you're going to find in Greece, in Russia, in Romania where I'm from, uh, in Bulgaria, and when the Americans were bombing in Kosovo and they were bombing churches, they were Orthodox churches. Okay, uh, now, Orthodoxy is very close to Catholicism. There are some differences, one of which is that if the Pope is like a prom queen with the red shoes and the dress and the tiara, <laughs> our uh, patriarch is uh, a rapper. He's wearing golden clothes, two huge icons on separate chains on his chest, and the freaking crown, the big one, the richest one you've ever seen. Okay, so uh, one of the differences between Catholicism and Orthodoxy, even though they are sister churches, they are really friendly to each other, they accept each other's sacraments and everything. Uh, one of the differences is that while Catholic priests were not allowed to get married, I was required to. <laughs> really, I'm, I'm not joking. I was, they, will, they would not make me a priest before I get married. Because, of course, we don't have the thing with the, the altar boys. <laughs> that was one of the reasons. That was one of the reasons why, we, why our priests get married. So they don't feel so tempted about the altar boys. And, uh, the other reason is that I was not allowed to get married after becoming a priest because I was the bachelor. <laughs> at that point everybody, for some reason, wanted to be the wife of a priest. So I, I w it was not very wise to allow priests to date for very long. So they needed to be already married. <sighs> okay, uh, I, I studied for about 10 years to become a priest. Started when I yeah I started when I was in eighth grade. I studied for a year preparing for high school. Then I went to high school. Then I went to university, and then I got married for the first time. <laughs> okay, and uh, I went to my bishop to become a priest because I was ready. I was prepared. I was, I had all the studies. I had everything. And uh, the story is very long, but I'm going to make it short. He wanted a, bri a bribe from me, the, uh, the bishop. Uh, the way I heard it, because he said no numbers, was that if you wanted a really good church in the middle of the city, really nice everything, you had to come up with about 20,000 euro. <laughs> which, <laughs> which, for Romania, is really much. Uh, an average salary in Romania is 250 euro per month. Okay, so first of all, I was shocked when I heard about, first of all, that he wants a bribe, and second, that it's this high. Second of all, I have my religious reasons, which were that I'm not going to be an accomplice to something as horrible as this. Third of all, it was very practical. How many years would I have to steal from my church to get my investment back? <laughs> you see, that was a problem. And but this is the point where I, when I was starting to, to become depressed about it. I, first of all, I realized uh, this bishop was in his 40s. They statistically live until they're in their 90s, and they don't retire. Only priests retire. So I thought this guy, if somehow I become a priest under him, is going to be the only boss I, guess I get to have in my life. And he's like a mafia boss. <laughs> so... I became really sad and I said I was supposed to get born in another part of the country where they have an honest bishop. <laughs> what honest bishop? <laughs> I, heard, I had heard while I studied for 10 years, as I said, I had heard rumors. I, I even ha there were even news on TV about uh, uh, bishops wanting brides. So, uh, but we were always told not to believe them because the atheist media is trying to destroy our values or something. 
Okay, atheist is still in Romania a curse word. Uh, it's an insult to call somebody an atheist. It's, it's what politicians use to insult each other. <laughs> I, I'm not joking. It's funny, but I'm not joking. Okay, so <laughs> I had heard rumors about it. And while I, while I heard rumors about my bishop too, I was, told, I was always told not to believe them. And I didn't. At this point, when I thought that I need to find myself another bishop, I realized that the other, I have no reason to doubt the rumors anymore and the, and the atheist media. Okay, uh, so I, I, said I was born in the wrong time in history. And then I realized that all of the church history is already in my head after 10 years. And I said, okay, how much would I have to go back in history to find somebody honest? <laughs> Tough job! <laughs> I went all the way to Jesus at some point, and I still was not convinced that his apostles were, had pure intentions, <laughs> judging by some parts of the Bible. So, and most of all, I realized that the same people who are doing this to me today decided what books we get to have in the Bible choosing from a collection of more books. I don't trust them with what they chose necessarily. So I don't trust the Bible anymore. At this point, I went to my parents and I said, I am not going to become a priest anymore. And the sky fell on everybody. It was... <laughs> the thing is that my parents, in the beginning, were not religious because we lived... <laughs> We lived under communism in Romania, and in communism, religion was strongly discouraged. So, uh, uh, my parents were not that rebellious, let's just put it that way. So they were not, they were not what we would call atheists, but they were environmental atheists, <laughs> I would say. So, uh, but when I was, I don't know, I was 10, 11, I decided that I'm going to fast. Because now communists fell, and uh, because communists were so against religion, it must have meant that religion is really good. <laughs> At least I was impressionable enough, about eight or nine, I was, when, when I thought that religion is really good, be, also because communists didn't like it. So I started going of my own will to religious classes in school, taught by a priest, and I was so interested that at some point the priest said, mm, maybe you should go to a seminary. And everybody was very happy. When, and when I was about 11 and I told my family that I'm going to fast for the first time, they were so impressed that suddenly everybody was religious. My grandparents, who can barely move, are, are today, they are going to church every Sunday. Okay, my, my mother is in a church choir. My sister went to her first confession in her 30s. Everybody became so frigging religious and now I was not anymore. <laughs> okay, and now they started debating me from the other side. And I said, do you realize how much I know about this stuff? Do you understand? And they started to, to come with, with all the weak stuff. And I said, but do you know that the Bible says this? No, but you must be wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I must be. Okay, so uh, at some point, as I said, I decided that I'm not going to do church anymore. But I was still kind of a Christian. Jesus must have existed. <coughs> he, he must have. And then I realized, why? <laughs> I don't... I don't believe that... I don't believe the Bible anymore because I don't believe the people who chose the books there. So how can I believe in something that I only know from the Bible that I don't believe anymore? So I had to drop, oh my god, I'm not Christian anymore. What am I going <laughs> Yeah, I, of course, I went through, through a few phases. Maybe I should turn Catholic because they have better bishops or something, but I'm not celibate. <laughs> but I'm not cut out to be celibate. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, then Protestant, but I learned for 10 years how bad Protestantism is and how they are heretics and everything. And while I did not trust the people who taught me that, I did trust their reasoning because it was sound. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I couldn't become a Protestant. So then I thought, 
maybe Muslim, no, because they started from the Bible as well, ultimately. I, I thought then maybe, okay, Oriental, Oriental religions. I started studying Buddhism and everything, and at some point I reached, I, I, I didn't know any atheists. All I knew about atheism was, we studied from school, and uh, when I was preparing to become a priest, and pretty much the only important thing they told us is to stay away. <laughs> really. It was, uh, there were a few Stroman uh, fallacies and stuff like that, they were coming with some weak arguments, but the main idea that I got from that class is that they are not worth debating. Okay, so I didn't know a lot, but I knew that I need to stay away from atheism. So I was looking, look, actively looking for a religion. So at some point I, I came to the conclusion that there, if, if there is a God, we don't know him or her or it or... Okay, so uh, that's where I stayed for years. Uh, until finally I went, I came across Dan Dennett's Breaking the Spell. <coughs> and I found out that I'm not alone. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was still not an atheist. I thought that there is some kind of God. And uh, I was a bit... Uh, I, I didn't get it why, why Dennett is, is insisting on nothing supernatural. How can you possibly know? Because I, I always had this idea that you have to know that there is no God. You have to know that there is nothing supernatural. You don't, it's not the other way around. So I kept looking for it, and so finally I came across uh, the atheist experience from Austin, Texas. And they got everything out of me in a matter of weeks. I, I was an atheist, and that was that. And uh, yeah, I came out to my parents. I just didn't say the word atheist. I just said everything else because I heard somebody, I can't remember who, saying uh, that her mother said, not believing in God, that I can get, but you're an atheist? <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm kind of in that situation now. I don't believe in God, but I'm not an atheist. Or something. <laughs> I, I never said the word, but if they ask, I would say that I am. Okay, my, the last thing, I, li I really liked your reaction when I was presented as really close to becoming a priest, because... Uh, I guess you think that I'm a rare case. Uh, and this is, this is what brings me to the clergy project. <laughs> Did you guys hear about it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, some of you didn't. Uh, this is a community formed and maintained by people who used to be clerics and are now atheists and people who are still actively clerics and are <laughs> atheists. <laughs> Uh, it's a highly secretive, I had to, uh, luckily they didn't ask for a sample of my blood, but they did ask for a Skype interview and everything to accept me in the project, also because I, I did not quite make it into clergy, but I was close enough, so I got accepted recently. Uh, the community has just under 350 people, which is kind of a lot, I'm not that rare of a case. Actually, I, I may be rare for an Eastern Orthodox, though. I didn't hear a lot of people coming out of that. Which is a problem because I might be going back <laughs> really soon. And I guess this is what I'm going to say tonight, unless you have questions for me. Thank you.